Welcome to the first episode of the Lake Farm Hill Five. Cyberpunk 2077 is not so much a futurist game as a retro futurist game. It's set in a future, not as seen from where we are now, but as seen from 1988 when Mike Pondsmith first started working on the cyberpunk world. Consequently, it's a world in which there are no bicycles at all, but many gas guzzling cars. And driving is important. There are many quests in the game which you cannot complete while, without driving. And generally, there are many parts of the game and many places in the world where, there's a great, where it's a great deal more convenient to get around by car. People who play or playing games on computers almost invariably play with keyboard and mouse. And with keyboard and mouse, the experience of driving in Cyberpunk is just awful. But get a game controller, and while it does not become easy, it does become fun. This series is about evaluating the vehicles available to you in the game, to discuss which provide most fun, and why. Because these vehicles drive very differently, the worst of them handle quite comically badly, and the best of them fairly well. The car you start the game with is very poor and gives a negative impression of what the experience of driving will be. But others are much better, and in a game world where there are no real consequences, you can drive, you can enjoy driving, in ways in which you never could in the real world. In each episode, I shall cover one vehicle, show you around it, tell you anything I think that is especially interesting about it and take it from the solar power station rapid travel point to the Lake Palm rapid travel point as fast as I can, so you can see how well, or how badly, it handles. I'm starting this series with a car I really like, one of the few I'd recommend you buy. The Quadra Type 66 Javelina. Quadra is, in the game world, a mid range mass car make, and the Type 66 is one of their most powerful and sporty models. A bit like Ford Mustang. I'll be driving a couple of other Type 66 variants in future episodes. What's special about the Javelina is that it has been heavily customised by Nomads. Nomads live in the Badlands, which are, because of the global warming, mainly desert, and they adapt their vehicles for use in the Badlands. So the Javelina is a powerful, sporty car adapted to drive fast across desert. Think of a Paris-Dakar, or, in the Americas, a Baja racer. By comparison to other Nomad customized sports cars you can buy, for example the Mitsubishi Shion Coyote, I find it more tractable, and I prefer the song of its engine. The detailing of the cyberpunk cars, internally as well as externally, is really well done. And I want to show you some of this. So here, the Javelina's cockpit. I have no idea whether anyone, even at CD Projekt, really knows what all these switches and dials do, but they look extremely impressive. So that's the car. Now let's talk about the hill climb. We're going to drive from the solar power rapid travel point, which is where we are, up to the lake farm rapid travel point, as you can see on the map here. If I click it right, good. So as you can see, there are five hairpin beds. Then once you reach the top of the escarpment, 
there's a fairly straight and in fact fairly level road which you can either drive on road or you can drive alongside across the desert. We'll start out of the car at solar power station point and we'll end out of the car at the lake farm point. Let's go. I love the sound of the Javelina's engine. It's a very visceral, raucous sound without being hard. You don't feel that metal is being caught. We're coming now to the first turn and this one is very tight. It pays to slow down a bit more before that. I apologise for the beeping. The horn button is on the same joystick as the steer wheel, and so when steering sharply, it's quite hard to avoid sounding. As you can see, you can power slide these cars around these corners. It's better, easier with the better balanced cars, and the Javelina is one of these. So, by my standards, this is a fairly tidy one. I wish it were better, but it isn't. The bend at the top here is a right angle, and because of the slope, you often take it flying. So, in the Javelina, I've simply avoided the road, ignored the road, and cut across the bend. Um, with a less tough car, you'd have had to slow down more. And again, here, I'm cutting across the desert simply because with a javelina I can and it's fun. So that's the Quadra Type 66 javelina and here we are at Lake Farm. I hope you've enjoyed the ride. And my rating? This one is a bomb.